you can get as close as possible to your users. Isn't that the promise of edge computing? Bringing data and processing closer to the end user? But how close, you may ask? Well, really, really, very, really close. Think of home sensors and think of car sensors and think of watch sensors, but it can also be a device upstream that covers a whole area like a tower that oversees a big city. And when we talk about edge, we usually mean the continuum between those two use cases. The use cases for edge computing are very broad. IoT and autonomous driving are but a fraction of what edge computing promises to deliver. But here's the problem. The internet was not designed for uploading data. The internet was initially architected for download-centric use cases. So streaming a 4K movie from Netflix to your TV is way cheaper than a home security camera that needs to push its live footage in real time back to the cloud. So we're still in need of infrastructure and software architecture solutions should the edge deliver on its many, many promises. My name is Ilyas. I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. Not every computation should be done on the edge, but some workloads must be done on the edge. Some architects consider privacy a big factor in choosing whether a given workload needs to be run on the edge or not. There's also a case to be made for scalability, uh, although it's a case I want you to approach with caution, you know, which is better, running a machine learning model on a city level or having tiny ML deployed on every small gadget for every human in that city. I'm not sure. But the use case that pretty much everyone agrees on is latency. Here's the thing, moving data around costs a lot of money. In 2022, storage is a commodity. Storing your files in S3 is a no-brainer. But did you know that you incur charges for data transfer even when you browse the S3 console to fetch and list your files? Check out the Amazon S3 pricing page, for example, and you'll notice that you're not only charged for storing objects, but also for transferring them out of the cloud towards your users. And this is a common practice, by the way, as bandwidth is a big concern for all cloud providers. Now, as I mentioned before, we designed the internet initially around downloads, but when you add IoT to the mix, you're now flipping the system to be in a more upload-centric, and now you're asking the network to do something that it wasn't designed for. Take the case of computer vision. Would you rather build it on edge or design a system that pumps all that 4K data streams up to the backend for centralized processing. I actually tested both when I was looking to add home security cameras to my place. I wanted my cameras to detect the movement, no matter how ridiculous it might be, perform shape recognition on the moving object, and send me a notification if the shape matches a human, a pet, or a car. And yes, Amazon recognition is very easy to work with. And yes, it offers to analyze 5,000 images per month for free. But I ended up running Dudes, dedicated open object detection service on my local M93P Tiny because of the latency involved between the time the movement happens up to the moment I receive a notification. And that's why I believe computer vision is a killer app for the edge. The only people actually who think sending raw video data over network is a good idea are people that sell you network connectivity. I also bet you don't want your home footage to be uploaded directly to a cloud provider. So privacy and security are good reasons to build stuff on the edge. But let's come back to that in a second. Now, latency is a spectrum in the same way that edge is a continuum. So there are the sub 20 millisecond round trip latencies called real time hard constraint latencies where you'd probably have to put your edge in the hospital operating room or on the factory floor or on the Formula One car. But then there are e-commerce websites where you pretty much just want to avoid serving your customer in China, a website that loads in North Virginia. So you can get away with putting your edge upstream, maybe, maybe even on a city level, you know, or maybe on a region level. And that's where, for example, all those CDN services like CloudFront put their edge locations. It usually covers a whole region. So not all latency is the same. In the hospital room, it has to be real time or else someone might die. Exactly. Love me. So milliseconds mean life. In other use cases, milliseconds mean losing a customer. You know, the first one is latency critical, and the second one is latency sensitive. There's a big difference. 
So there are trade-offs to be made to choose where on the latency spectrum you want to be. Just don't forget the bandwidth benefits that you get as well. I've seen companies make huge bandwidth savings by not having to go half away around the world every single time someone wants to load a web page. Before talking about edge hierarchy, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Elias, nice to meet you. This channel is all about getting to the cloud and growing in the cloud, you know, career-wise, but also from an architectural point, technical point. If you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss out on new uploads. Now let's assume you want to develop a service and you want it to be as close to your end users as possible. In other terms, you want it to be on edge. You're immediately faced with a lot of questions, like where do you run your logic? In the device itself? On the CDN? There are also many CDN options like Lambda at Edge or Cloudflare Edge Workers, or do you run your processing somewhere in between? Remember, it's a continuum. Now, edge architects suggest you think about the edge as if it was a tree. In other terms, a hierarchy. You can have thousands of devices at the extreme edge, car sensors, home sensors, and then you can have hundreds of devices above those at the far edge. One of these devices can be put in a parking space or, or in a playground, in a high building, you know, and cover a wide area. And above those, you can then put a few devices that can cover the whole city. And then we get to the huge large scale public clouds. Once you have your hierarchy laid out, it's time then to ask yourself the following question. Where should I put my processing in this tree? From a cost perspective, from a performance perspective, and from a security perspective as well. For cost reasons, it might be better to go up in the hierarchy and still be able to satisfy the latency requirements. You know, that's, I think that's the first thing you need to think about. The second thing is, it's not every microservice in your application that need to be satisfied with the same latency. You can basically have microservices running at the device level, and then some can potentially go up in the hierarchy and run on a city level edge, and some can even run directly in the public cloud. We'll talk about the architectural principles that are important to look at in a second. So just keep in mind for now that this balance between cost, performance is paramount when designing for the edge. And then ask yourself the following question. Is your workload latency critical or latency sensitive? Remember what we said at the beginning? Also, is it location centric or is it user centric? If it's latency sensitive, but you need to serve a bunch of users, you're going to do it in a city or a regional areas. Yes, you are a little bit upstream, but you still got the balance between better latency and the ability to scale to a ton of users. And that's pretty much how CDNs work, like CloudFront edge locations. And you can look at the CloudFront edge locations map to see how these locations are situated to cover a whole area. Now, if if your workload is latency critical or very location or asset specific, you're going to run it on-prem, on the factory floor, on the emer emergency room, in the car. You wouldn't want your airbag, for example, to be deployed from the cloud because milliseconds in this scenario mean the difference between life and death. Let's take an e-commerce website as an example. If you had an edge for every single user, the caching would be pretty much useless because you couldn't share any of that data. So you might as well not cache it in the first place. And that's why Amazon CloudFront uses regional edge locations, for example. So when a user visits your product page for the first time, CloudFront has to go all the way to H3 to find the page's elements, but then it stores them in the edge location. So all the subsequent page loads by that user and by all the other users coming from the same region will have elements served directly from the edge location next time. Now, engineering is all about balancing trade-offs. So try to find that balance where things run along that continuum, you know, that hierarchy that we talk about. Actually, the Linux Foundation Edge Taxonomy white paper is a good read if you're looking to know more about inherent technical trade-offs as you go through the continuum. And I will leave the link in the description below. Now we talked about cost and we talked about latency, but how about security? Well, if your data is not in a secure data center, you have to assume someone can just walk up and touch that box. So, so you gotta think about securing these devices and, and, and these sensors in a different way. Shall not pass. 
we're not talking only about firewall rules. We are actually talking that if someone can physically reach your device, that dramatically changes the threat level. So from an architectural standpoint, we want obviously to leverage all these principles we've been using in the cloud, platform independence, loosely coupled architecture, microservices, but because the memory on these tiny devices at the edge is very, very limited, you can't realistically support any type of virtualization or any type of containerization. You know, you probably have to go embedded, no other choice, not realistically at least, which can be sometimes really, really painful. But if I am able to build stuff using Arduino, I'm sure you can do it too. I keep it simple. I would even sometimes duplicate pieces of code, you know, not proud of it. But since most of my DIY edge solutions live within my house, my priorities as, are mostly about um, energy management and network communication. For example, while building this water sensor to put in my basement, I learned how energy hungry Wi-Fi is. So rather than leaving my sensor connected to Wi-Fi all the time, I only connect to Wi-Fi when water is detected then immediately turn it off after the notifications are sent to my central home server through MQTT. It's on that 24-7 running server that I do most of the computations and most of the decision making. Should I send voice message across all the Amazon Echo devices? Should I notify my iPhone? Should I send a notification to my Apple Watch? Should I flicker red lights in my office and in the kitchen? Of course, I could have programmed all that in the device itself, but I decided to do it up in the continuum because energy is my priority and I could realistically afford three digit milliseconds latency. And by the way, I share code and diagrams and parts and pretty much everything you need should you want to build something similar. And I'll leave uh, a few links in the description below as well. Now there's still other points I want to touch on like containerization and tooling at the edge and why not even explore cube edge uh, as well as anti-patterns and mistakes to avoid when orchestrating and architecting for the edge but i'm going to keep this episode short and please let me know if you want a following episode so if you guys like this type of videos please let me know in the comments please give the video a like i always appreciate it it always helps the channel until next one my name is Elias. peace out